really learning how to do that, like the low, low guttural toilet bowl kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I heard someone call it toilet bowl gutturals once, and I, I ran with it. I love that term. <laughs> This is Joe from Loudwire, and joining me today from I Prevail, we've got Eric Van Lerberg. New album, True Power. Eric, how are you? Good, man. How you doing? Doing pretty good. Always a good day to be talking to some people, taking it through how you learned to scream, which is exactly what we're going to do. Tell me, how old were you when you first heard an extreme metal vocal? What was your reaction to it? It would have had to been eighth or ninth grade. No, it was eighth grade. I went from a, a private private Catholic school and moved into a public school. And there was just a lot more kids and, you know, not wearing uniforms, seeing kids wearing metal T-shirts. And, and I remember uh, making friends with this kid and he burned me Metallica's Ride the Lightning CD. And obviously, you know, never have I heard anything like the deeper cuts, like the more, you know, the heavier stuff. I think it was trapped under ice on Metallica's Ride the Lightning and going, holy shit. Just mind blown that, you know, someone could make these sounds and, I, and then past that moving into like Slipknot and, and uh, System of a Down and Mudvayne and, and such. What was the first time that you really heard like fully blown extreme vocals dominating a song? Obviously Slipknot have some of those songs yeah. too without clean vocals. I think my ninth or 10th grade year, I think maybe my ninth guys, because I know we got, we got internet <laughs> at that point. And um, I've got a plane flying overhead. I'm stuck outside because my internet's down. Now I got, I live by an air base and there it goes. Okay, keep looking up. Ah! I was into like Beneath the Massacre and Carnifex and, and who else was there as Blood Runs Black, getting into more and more extreme vocals and hearing like, all these just like guttural pig squeals and the Bree Breeze back in you know, <laughs> 2006 and 2007 going, how in the fucking world are they doing this? So when was the first time that you actually attempted to do uh, your own screaming of any sort? Honestly, it was probably when I started driving myself to school. I had a little little truck and I lived, you know, 10 minutes from from the school. So on every drive in the morning and every drive back home, I, you know, had I put a little MP3 player in into my truck and the radio back in the day when we didn't have Bluetooth. Plug my iPod, my iPod uh, video, that big clunky thing in there and just put on shuffle and whatever came up. I just try singing, screaming along. And man, it was probably months of going into school with a hoarse voice. I just remember one day it, it just clicked and I figured out how to do it and it didn't hurt i didn't really feel it and and it sounded close enough to what they were doing and when did your family become aware that you had ambitions to do these types of things what was the reaction what they think of it are they into any of this music at all not at all <laughs> not at all my uh i remember it was probably senior year going into college i was playing local shows with local bands and i my parents never came out to to any of them but i know i think my cousins came out to a couple and it never was really anything taken seriously until you know i prevail started up and we were actually you know writing records and taking a lot of time and putting money into it that my parents were like well, wait so what what is this that you're doing i dropped out of school dropped out of college had not even a bachelor's in anything and uh, two months later, we released the record. And six months later, I think we were on our first tour and signed. And that's when they were like, hey, if you can if you can afford to feed yourself and cover your bills, then we support you. And that was that was great. They don't they don't do it in front of me, but I've caught them, you know, bragging to some of their friends. like, Oh, yeah, Eric's been doing this and he went to this country. And so I, I know I know they're. <laughs> reluctant uh, maybe not reluctantly they're they're in support of it so let's talk about taking it from the car just trying to figure out what even this is to try to make this noise to practice shows and tour um, obviously those are very different things in terms of maintaining your voice learning about the depth of your range and for how long you could really do this without hurting yourself uh, right. so what was practice like and the shows like early on did you find that your voice was really in bad shape after these sessions in these shows <laughs> Honestly, yeah, we would go play, you know, two shows a month, maybe at, at these bars and little venues. And 
and for a day or so after i'd be hoarse and you know drinking lots of water before and after but just thinking like oh yeah it's just how it goes and and uh then thinking like how these bands actually play multiple shows a day and and tour for months i was like that something's not right um but like while i was working at the factory there was a uh, you know I, I may or may not have smoked a little bit and i remember hearing myself on uh our ep when we were recording it and just going that i hate that i i know i can do better than that so in trying to explore the depth of your voice did anything give you particular trouble like the pig squeals or like the slam style gutturals or super high shrieks anything like that i remember starting off and it was i was a big suicide silence fan you know mitch lucker and i figured out how to do the higher stuff and and I can never for the life of me get the, like the low bassy toilet bowl sound and stuff. And and then I think it was shortly after that, I remember watching a lot of uh, it was big White Chapel. Still am a big White Chapel fan. I think over the last, you know, 10 or so years, it's been it's just taken time to figure it out and learn it. And even now, I think it was just a few years ago that I was like, really learning how to do that like the low low guttural toilet bowl kind of stuff <laughs> i heard someone call it toilet bowl gutturals once and i, I ran with it i love that term <laughs> let's talk about enunciating now um mm -hmm. is this something that's always been super important to you um in terms of your own vocals or even what you prefer to listen to in extreme metal listen to anything metal related across the board you know black metal to that's a little more you can't understand it slam and stuff like that grind but i um i don't know I, I i don't think i've ever been impartial to one one style or the other but i do for i prevail and what we're doing find it very um accessible push the enunciations a little heavier a little harder and really enunciate some words because i feel like it's just with our style of music especially you know you got you got fans that come in that are new to metal and maybe we're the first band that's ever had harsh vocals at all that they've ever heard. So when they, when they can hear the song and, you know, understand the, the lyrics a little, a little more easier without having to look them up. Um, I think that that gets people in and invested and involved right away. So when they go to see the show and there's that call out line or that breakdown line or whatever, everyone's screaming it back. That's important for us too. you know, just having, having people to hear it the first time and be able to pick it up and understand it. Cause I, you know, I, when I was a kid, I'd buy the CD and be like, this is awesome. Flip through the lyric book real quick and be like, what are they mm -hmm. saying? Oh, that's tight. But not every kid is invested a hundred percent like that on first listen, you know? So sure. Let's take it back to the toilet bowl. Something I never thought I'd say, <laughs> uh, at least not in yeah. an interview. Uh, cupping <laughs> the mic could possibly give you a little bit of a toilet sound. Uh, mm -hmm. Where do you stand on cupping the mic? Is it something that you turn to from time to time? Uh, it's never been something that I've done intentionally. It was just a, a, ha a bad habit I picked up, like starting off, like, you know, I, everyone's looked at a musician and taken inspiration if they wanted to be a singer. Like, the way he does that, oh, man, that's sick, whether you know it or not. So, like, mm -hmm. I just picked up the mic and grabbed it by the top and just started screaming into it. And then it wasn't until we started touring that our, our sound guy who's incredibly talented was like, Hey, what you're doing is causing all this distortion and that it's, I promise you, it sounds better. If you just, I was like, man, I, I know, I know it's bad habit. I keep smacking my hand when I go to grab the top of the mic, but I don't know. I never, I never really, I, I know a lot of kids on the internet. Like, oh, he's cupping the mic. It's something we talk a lot about in this series. And it's funny because half the time people are just like, yeah, I just kind of, that's why I put my hand. It just looks cooler there. Yeah. You can't hold <laughs> yeah. the mic at the bottom. It just looks weird. It's aggressive music. It's got to be right here. Right, right. <laughs> I think that's, <laughs> I get that vibe. Yeah. <laughs> what else do you do uh, before the show? Is there any certain ritual that you have? Is there anything that you absolutely cannot do before getting on stage? Uh, THC has to be a little bit <laughs> away from the moment I walk on stage. Cause there's been times where we go up there and I'm talking, I'm talking like, shit, what was I supposed to be saying right now? Oh yeah. Give it up for the other bands. I told them, I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. A shot of whiskey or a slam of beer right there to cool the nerves. And we, we have this little ritual where we all get in the, you ever see hot rod 
part where they do this like goofy handshake and we took that from day one of our first show that's about it shot of whiskey slam a beer so you're chugging a beer like have you ever burped mid vocal manchester uk on our second second uh uh uk euro run uh i was supposed to do one of our old songs face your demon i just burped that's the perfect time i looked over guitarist and he just started laughing i was like i did that <laughs> thanks so much for joining us on how i learned to scream i prevail the new album true power eric thanks so much for joining us dude thank you for having me i love your love you guys stuff and stoked to be a part of it today